That right here. This is what you typically see is a, like a big oak tree with the roots spreading out and your lawnmower can't get by them. Uh, those are called buttress. This is but it helps hold that tree up. Carrots. That's a root. You're eating a root when you eat a carrot. The same thing for it. <laughs> same thing for it. Sweet potato, mashed potato, whatever. Alright, now here we go. There's the, the blanks that you're going to fill in as I go. Uh, you may already done that. I hope you have. That means you're ahead of it. Uh, roots take in watery minerals. When you fertilize with your triple 13, it goes in the ground, it, it rains, and the roots pick it up and take it to the leaves. Uh, the roots also, of course, anchor the tree so it won't blow away. Sometimes it still doesn't work. Um, the roots hold the stem up which hold the leaves up to the sun. And they also store food. That's why you eat potato for it, because it's stored that food that plant made, and you're stealing the food from the plant. So be it. All right? Now, inside there are a lot of tissues, and I'm going to take a look more at my next slide. Okay. Now, this, I hate that picture. It looks like a male penis thing. I can't help it. <laughs> Whatever I do, <laughs> enough said. All right, tip of its root cap is designed to be firm and penetrate the soil. And mainly, these things, they're real delicate. They could stand to be shoved down through the dirt. Well, they have to be shoved down through the dirt. They don't grow, they are pushed with great force. You know, they'll crack your driveway, they'll pick your house up. That's how, yeah, they're strong, baby. So, penetrate soil, takes the deeper tissues, and then the next one you have going up. Um, this is where cells are dividing. Cells are dividing. This is where mitosis is happening. Uh, many pictures we get showing you mitosis, we get from the tip of an onion root because it is so easy to see it. There. So, that's why when I'm going to show you this, I can use the same slide I showed my coaches with. And, of course, here there's getting longer. As they get longer, they push this down. He's just flat. He just shoves the ground like you might shove your finger into the sand. Just, it's, it's forceful. And the cells, they get longer. They just get longer. Now, when they're getting longer, we call that primary growth. When they're getting bigger this way, we call that secondary growth. So you got two kinds of growth going on here. Up here in this area is where they're maturing and they're becoming what they are. Either they're going to become like the endoderm, ectoderm, they're going to become so flying. These cells in here, they're just, they're nothing yet. And here they get along, but here they start to take on a look. They look like phloem, they look like xylem, they look like um, the, the Casparian strips. So this slide um, as you see right here now here's the problem though this is a microscope slide and there's no little hairs over there up here you'll start seeing the hairs come off but in in the zone elongate now all it's doing is getting longer and shoving this down deep so you're going to find no lateral roots coming out here and i got some more pictures showing you lateral roots that's all of that slide. So if you go from the top, well actually I like going to the bottom because that's where it all starts. This is the radical that's grown much bigger. And this is just a real callous cap. Oh, it's, it's just a cap. And behind it, these cells are going through mitosis, shoving the cap further and further down deeper. Up here, they're, they're elongating, shoving the cap deeper. Here, they are turning into what they're going to be for the rest of your life. They're, it's called differentiation. When they different, they become different. Okay? Now, this picture I just grabbed. I didn't even change the wording. I can read it, and I'm going to read it to you if I have to. Um, the outer covering, like anything, is called the epidermis. And the blue area in here is the cortex. Now, here's the problem. It's hard to explain to you. You see the green? 
If I could remove that red, it'd be all green, would it not? Okay. All of this green, even the green there, is the endodermis. The red goes smack dab down the middle of the endodermis. It's in the, it's in the middle of the cells. That's a Casparian strip. If I could remove that red, you would have blue, green, light blue. But this band of red had better be there. That's your gasket. And water goes through here really easy. Can't go through there though. This, this determines what passes and what doesn't. That's your, that's your gasket. So now, just now under the um, under the Paris, under the um, endodermis, there's a band of cells. Now, not, it's not big bands. That's called the pericycle. If you're gonna make a lateral root, it grows right there, it grows out. See, this is a root hair. It is from the, and it's so small you can't even see it without a scope. But now if you, have a, if you see the root come outside, it grows that one right here and grows on out and takes on off. I can see that sucker. That's like a big old lateral root. But this thing right here is nothing more than an extension of, the, of that one cell. I can't see that cell, I can't see that either except through the scope, okay? Now, as you move a little deeper in here, you're gonna find this stuff right there. It's not labeled on here, but it's called the cambium. Because the cambium makes this and it makes this. And I needed one to add that to my picture. Now, when I stole the picture off the internet, they didn't have the cambium listed, and I just, I just thought about it then, teaching the thing. There's so that, a cambium. That's the light blue part, the cambium? Yeah. This part here, um, if, I'm going to go back and put a line right there, and I'm going to spell it C-A-M-B-I-U-M, put a line right here, and I'm going to spell it, and I'm going to tell the classes right that this cambium mm -hmm. is what produces this flowing and this xylem. They come from the cambium. They differentiate from the cambium. So I got to add a label to this because I can make it better. This, 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 this. Those are your vascular tissues that's called phloem. And what's phloem carrying? Food or water? Mm -hmm. Food. This inside here, this is a xylem. So what is he carrying? Water. water. Now the stuff in here, going up or going down? The xylem goes down. The water going up or going down? Xylem goes up. Up to leaves. The stuff in here going up or going down? Down. down. You're really ain't making no food, is it? Mm -mm. So that stuff's coming from the leaves. So this is your down elevator, and that's your up elevator. And what's going up is the food, is the water the roots are taking in that the leaves need. When you water your plants, don't water the leaves. That does no good. Make sure the water hits the ground under your plant. Water the pot. Let the leaf alone. It's going to take the water in from the roots, not from the leaves. A lot of folks they they sprinkle the leaves and they're wasting. It. Now they're getting they to get dust off. If you're going to, if you want to give water to that plant, you got to water the ground because it's the it's the root that's going to bring the water in and take it up. Okay. So except for my label, I got to add one day. This thing is showing you. Now, this is a dicot. See the star right there? Only dicots have a star right there. And a monocot, there's kind of a rounding nature, and there's oftentimes the center of rot in a dicot. Okay? Now, the epidermis is why I want to say it's, it's for protection, as you know. It's, it's it's outside the root. Um, it separates the root from the soil and the air and the water that's in the soil. But the water goes right through it. It don't stop the water. It's like a screen door. I mean, you just go right through. No problem there. Um, you may find root hairs coming off of it, but they're all micro you can't see them. They're all microscopic. Because they come off of one cell. Um, And the area of maturation is the one above elongation. That's where you find the root hairs. 
And the root hairs up there, they, they give it a head start because one day you're going to find you're going to find a lot of roots coming out. But root hairs help you absorb more water and minerals. You ever dug a plant and a thing died on you? Mm -hmm. I have. You destroyed the root system. You got you got a big up a you got dig up a huge ball of earth, or you would destroy the roots. You would destroy the roots. It's a, and most folks will tell you, and it's a fact. You look at that tree on top, you can imagine that much of the ground too. And a lot of folks they do it. Dig. They just kind of just dig around the bottom of it, and, and they cut all them roots from the shovel. They know they're doing it. And they're wiggling it back and forth. You expect that thing to live? You gotta be crazy. These big old machines that have big spades. Yeah. They that's the machine picks the whole ground up. But that's how you want to take something up. Cortex is 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 right right under the um, epidermis. That's where the things are stored. That's what you eat. That's the potato. That's the sweet potato. That's the carrot that you're actually taking in. The endodermis I showed you in my other picture, it was um, it was actually green if you if you remove the Casparian strip. So um, it is several. It's a thin ring. It's just inside the cortex, and, and there's a wax material lies inside it called the Casparian strip. I showed you the red thing, and this waxy substance is what makes sure. It controls the flow of water into the xylem. Can't go through there unless it lets it. So this is how this Casparian strip that determines what passes through and what does not pass through. And this is the open door. That's the open door. That's the open door. This door controls what enters or not. It's purely for regulation. It's not for strength, it's just for regulation of uh, diffusion. All right? The pericycle is a layer of cells, it's a single layer, just inside the endodermis. I got a good picture on that. Matter of fact, the one in there we have shows it really well. Um, if you have any roots coming outside of that big root, they're coming from the pericycle. And they're always going to be found above the area, the zone of maturation. Okay, you got the, you got the zone of mitosis right above the root cap. Then you got the zone of elongation where they're getting longer. And above that, they're starting to turn into cells. That's where you're, when you finally get a pericycle, you can start making the side roots. There's no pericycle down there in the elongation zone. You don't have one yet, so you can't do any side roots until you get the pericycle. And that's going to start in the zone of maturation. The vascular tissue, I've told you, of two types. One carries food, one carries water. I have this in the same order that I caught them here, so flowing this for food, this out for water. Uh, these are thin, thin cells, I tell you, and they're carrying. They, they're between, you know my star I showed you? They're between the arms. This is forms a star. The star I actually call the steel. This right here, I can call that the steel. There's your steel. And the steel contains a xylem. And between these arms, between the arms, you'll see the floor. Now, the next picture is just show you how something turns. This is a root. And what happens, the root tip senses gravity and knows it's down there. This hormone is a growth hormone. This hormone accumulates down here. It slows the growth down. This side is growing faster than this side. This side is going to make it bend down. Because it's growing. Does that make sense? At the bottom it grows slower than the top. Then it's going to bend down. So this, yes, yeah, it's a growth hormone. But it's the opposite hormone. It slows down growth. So, because oxygen is down here, slowing this down and holding it back, the top keeps growing fast, and that's why the sucker turns down and starts growing down toward the center of the earth. So, relative to the upper, you know, that's why it curves down. Now, this slide shows you all these little bitty. It takes a microscope because you can't see these. 
without an oxygen. And they're from water and mineral uptake, as I tell you. They, they increase surface area. The more of these you have, the more water you can soak up. The minerals, more minerals. But like I said, these are micro... You cannot see these things in your hand. They're microscopic. This is in the zone of maturation. Uh, they secrete an acid, and a lot of folks put on lime to, to affect the pH of the soil. Because so these will make the soil become acid, and lime makes it basic again. Um, this will then cause more intake of your other minerals. So because when this gets acid, it then re it causes a reaction to occur, and the calcium and the phosphorus and all those things that you get in fertilizer has an even an easier time getting in and going up to your leaves. If you don't care about anything more than making your leaves green, what kind of fertilizer would you use? All you care about is green leaves, not the roots, ammonium nitrate. It'll make your leaves pretty and green. If you want to work on the whole plant, leaves, stem, and roots, you get money like, like 13, 13, 13. They call it triple 13. But that won't make your leaves as green as plain ammonium is. Doesn't know what you want to do. Now these are seedlings. Okay. I do see both cotyledons. I see a taproot forming and all these things coming off. These are these are root hairs under a microscope. Now you can't see them, but those these up here are lateral root. And the more you have, the more you take up. This is underground. This right here is going to be pulled out of the ground. It's going to flip up. It's going to flip up. And these two cotyledons become your very two bottom leaves. And out of them grow the rest of the plant. But look what's bigger. Look how big that radical is. Compared to what's going to be above the ground. That's why it's hard to pull some roots out. You start pulling weeds. The struggle sometimes. That's what it won't give because the root system won't let it give. That's why it's poor and it anchors it. Okay? Osmosis is how water gets in. And I got this picture here showing you this is a cell membrane. There's a cell wall. Out here is inside a cell. Out here is outside a cell. The materials want to, the water wants to move this way. Because there, there is more water here than here. The material can't go anywhere, but the water can. So what's going to happen, the water is going to flow across into the plant. Now this is a structure right here showing you the real deal. This is a dicot. See the steel right there? Right there is the, I think I, I, think I got late, let's see. Yeah, I do. There's the epidermis. There's the cortex. This right here is the vascular cylinder. That's, that's where all the food's going and water's flowing. Um, this is the steel. That's basically all you got to worry about. I can see right, see right there that, can you see that circle of cells a little bit, the circle right there? That would be the um, pericycle. And outside of it, now I cannot see the Caspian strip in this one. Now, there's these pretty autumn leaves and, and it's the roots that determine the color of the leaf. you believe that? The roots produce hormones called phytohormones, they're, they're cytokinins. Those hormones travel up and affect, now this means leaf change, new color. So these colors, besides being impacted by the length of the day, it also happens because a hormone, you do know hormones make things happen, right? Mm -hmm. Cytokinins made by the roots 
Well, it makes that red maple tea turn turn red. Makes the sweet gum turn yellow. Now, the length of day also works. That's how I know it's not making the hormones. Because when a day gets shorter, there's not enough time to make the food, so why waste time trying? The leaves fall off. Right now, days are short. Summertime, days are long and leaves on the trees. Because you have time to make the food. So, anyway, leaf sessence, that's the biology way of saying autumn leaf colors. Autumn leaf colors, that's, that's the good way of saying it. This is the blow up. And I'm going to show you, okay, all this out here is the cortex, and this is starch. This is starch. This is stored food made by whom? The leaves or the roots? Who makes the food? The leaves. The leaves. And the root stores it for wintertime. All right? This right here is the endo, because way out here somewhere, I can't even see the epidermis can. This is off, this is off the wall. So this right here is the endodermis. Do you see that? See that fine line right there? See some of it? Or I see more of that. I see some right here. But that's that that's that Casparian strip you're seeing that's inside the endodermis. Now, you see the cells right there? Just inside? And you see it's like a different look to them? This one ring of cells, that one ring of cells right there, well, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. Well, this ring of cells is the, is the parasite. These big old tubes, like big straws, Meta means middle. Proto means on the edges. So the, yeah, but they're all xylem. They're all xylem. They even look a lot, just big and small. Right here, you see that little half structure? And this? See, see they're actually between, there's the arm, there's the arm, there it is. Arm, arm, there it is. Arm, arm, there it is. Those, that's the floor. So this is carrying food down, this is carrying food up, and this, this star looking thing right there, that's the steel. That's the steel. Everything inside here, we just call it a vascular tissue. Now this is this is a dicot, of course, because I see the steel. Okay. And all these things here have been stained with that starch made by the leaf, deposited and saved and stored in the cortex of the root. Alright? There's another picture I showed you, and this picture shows you what I just figured I'll show you enough times it'll still sink into. Um, you have you have a symplastic flow of water and an apoplastic flow, and that's the two I need to talk to you about. If you look at symplastic, it comes in through the root hair and goes straight in, straight line, right into the zone. That's thin plastic. Apoplastic means, uh-uh, this water comes in, stops right there. Because this Casparian strip is going to control, it goes in first. The water here, I ain't got food with the strip. The water here has to fool with the strip. Now some will still go in if the strip lets it. But this water has a free pass to get right on into the xylem. This water can make it to the xylem if the strip lets it through. And the strip is found, of course, in the endoderm. So there's the epidermis. There's the cortex. The, the first significant ring of cells you see is the endodermis. There is a line inside the endodermis, a fine line of wax called the Casparian strip that controls what? It was still that thing through, but it ain't got free pass. And then here, all this stuff right there is a cambium. 
and the cadmium is making this, is making that. These two tubes are being made by the cadmium. And again, I need to label it on this picture too. I'll probably draw a line in somewhere like this and call that the cadmium, because it is cadmium. And this is not my picture when I stole it off the internet, and I and I Bobby <laughs> kept it up. From the internet. All right. This is one I stole off the internet, and I like this. Um, this is the endodermis, and that red represents the comparing strip. That's the strip. Okay. Now, inside here is your xylem. The only approval of water, so I'm worried about xylem. Outside here is the cortex. Of course, the water's coming this way, right? All right. Now. Superin is a protein that is what? The Casparian, this thing is waterproof. This is a barrier that makes your water, you see where this cell joins that cell? That's like two bricks hit together and water is not allowed to seep. Through. It must pass through the cell. You said so the protein is waterproof? It's protein waterproof. It's like, it's like mortar for your brick of your house. You do know that on your home, when they build a brick home, it's the mortar that keeps the water out, not the brick, right? Mm -hmm. The brick is waterproof. It's the mortar that the guy slaps down that keeps, it, and if there's some insects that bore through that mortar and water getting out. All right, so this is the, here's the bricks. I got four bricks side by side. This is the mortar the holes them together, and this is what makes sure water can't go between them. Water can't. It must go through them. And that's how I regulate water. Because these cells can say yes or no to that water coming in. In a really wet environment, they're going to say no. In a desert, they're going to say, yeah, all you take. Come on through. Minerals cannot get between the cells, I tell you that. It must go through the cells, and that's why the thing is there for. So the cell membrane determines what minerals pass through and what don't. So this endodermis, which is this whole thing, is responsible for selecting mineral uptake and water too. Minerals. Had to have a door. Remember that cell, that, that channel I tell you about? Yeah, I think they were purple last quarter semester, and they opened and closed that thing through. Well, this calcium, he can't go through here. He has to go through there. And this red-looking thing is built into the cell wall right there and right there. The door is open. They can come on through. Door is closed. They can't get through. So that's what that door lets things get through. So it goes right on through. And then AT comes along and sends it in. AT, ATP makes it happen. Let me back up. It's outside here. It's inside here. ATP is brought in. I need energy now to make this work. The energy squeezes this and forces that way. Now, to make energy, what do I do to the ATP though? What do I do to it? What do I tear off of it? One of those phosphate. phosphates. Well, I rip it off, out comes the energy that works this channel protein. This now becomes that, and this is now inside the cell. It works that way for phosphorus, magnesium, all those minerals that it needs. That is active transport because it requires energy. This down here, that's passive. That, that water moves because kind of this is nature, but this requires energy and that's why this is active transport and this is passive transport it's all being done because of that blame Casparian strip making it happen that way without the strip everything we go through okay uh, this is a cross section again of a, and I want to I want to keep on until you get down path um, epidermis cortex you know what they're doing 
and there is the endodermis and it's selected mineral take like I showed you. The Casparian strip right in these walls. I didn't show the strip. These cells are side by side, but the strip runs inside here. I might one day go back and put the strip in it. This row right here, just inside there, is the pericycle. And if you have any new roots, that could come right out of there. And then we call that the periderm. Derm is layer. Derm is layer. Ectoderm, endoderm, periderm. Now, next one. This time, I remembered it. This is the canopy. And it's between the red and the green. Because he's making it. This is making the red. He also produces, and that means two kinds. Produces two kinds of tissues. Phloem. This is a simple way of saying food. From the leaves. To be deposited out here and saved. The xylem carried water minerals up to the leaves, raw materials. So this would be, this is a vascular bundle. It contains the phloem, the cambium that made them, and the xylem. Not this, just this is a vascular bundle. It does not count the pericycle. It's just what you see in the pretty green, white, and red colors. Now this is the monocot. Do you see a star in the middle? Do you see a star in the middle? You're not going to either. Because if you look at if you look at the other ones, I got a real picture somewhere there, I thought. There, that's your star. Now if you look at the monocot. You gotta find the star. That area, I have words coming up. No, I don't. I see what they are. Okay. What do you call that? What do you reckon that is? That's a root hair. Oh, Not a lateral root, because that root come off of. A lateral root comes out of here. In the next picture, how it coming out from deep inside. That's lateral root. That ain't lateral. That's a root hair come off of a cell. Now, what would you call this band of tissue right there? Epidermis. And watch the area right here. Cortex. Now, this band of tissue right here, what would you call that? What was that? So what is that? If this is epidermis, what's this? Endodermis. Now, Inside here, you have all this cambium. But the outer things you see on the outside, all that's flowing. It's always outside. That's all flowing. So guess what these are? That's your xylem. This is called your pith. P-I-T-H. Pith. And that's the nature of you're like zoysia grass, corn. A any monocot has this look to it. And I can look at the root and just look right at the steel and tell you, monocot, dicot. Because if it has a steel, it's a dicot. If it doesn't, it's a monocot. Now, this bad boy here. Now, you know, you know, if you look carefully, I see the star. And right there is where the pericycle is. And look what's coming off of it. This root is going this way. So the pericycle is, is actually producing a lateral root. There's your root cap. There's your root cap. There's your zone division. Only mitosis. Back here is the elongation. I can have two at one time starting. This is like, if you got a tap root like this is, 
and you may have two at one time. Now look at this picture here. Would you call that Monica Daka? Look at the center of it. What do you think it is? Monica Daka. Yeah. Do you see the star? I see a star. You don't see a circle, do you? No, I don't. Remember, remember that? That's, see that circle right there? I see that circle, yeah. I don't see a circle here, do you? Mm -hmm. That's a dot dot. Both of the dot dots. Mm -hmm. All right. Then get big. Mm -hmm. This is the root system. And that's like in the, in the rainforest where you have real poor dirt. They get really big roots to, to make up the difference. That's why they, 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 as it goes under your driveway, it's dry, right? It's going to be wet on top of the ground. It's going to go up to get to the ground and lift your driveway up and back. First thing you do is cut the root on both sides. Kill the root. Under your house, you raise your house up. You see your bricks separate. They're extremely powerful. And we've seen, in my tree service, we've cut down trees and the roots go back into the tree. Yeah. So we'll cut the thing down and then grind the root too. Mm -hmm. We won't do a root now. Um, so we, had, we had a root about that big around under my mom's driveway. Oh man. And it started and we didn't know it was that big till we cut it down. It was a sweet gum tree. Oh yeah. And I had a stuff grinding machine and I ground it up and ground it up against the driveway and it turned out to be It like, kept on going down, didn't it? And it was huge and we've been there for about ten years, so by then, it had lifted the driveway up like that far. Start to break it. Right there where it was at, yeah. yeah. It was coming out the other side. <laughs> what we've done it for, we had stump runners too. Yeah. And we'll take on one side of the driveway, up the wheel straight down the ground, mm -hmm. and just drive forward. Yeah. And almost like, like, like a circle yeah. saw. And just, cut, and just right cut anything by going there. Now, if your driveway is sinking, that's something else. But they will, they will lift, you might say sidewalk, with the same thing. You never want to build your house next to a tree, a pretty safe tree. Yeah. Now, if the leaves are over your house, guess what's under your house? The roots. The tree wasn't. I mean, the root was almost as big as the tree was. But, the well, you saw all those radishes to me with him. The roots, most of it. We call that, we don't chase roots. We, don't, we say we'll, we'll cut the root around yeah. the primary tree. We can chase them all across the yard. Yeah. And a lot of folks, well, it, you know, when I cut my grass, hit my lawnmower blade and bounce around the well, get you an axe out and you start chasing yourself. Yeah. You can't afford us to do that for you. you like a pear tree, it, they grow all uh, yeah. on top of the like magnolia do too. Or something magnolia like grows everywhere. Yeah, I used to charge them a bunch of extra money. To it's worth them. more to get them roots out. Yeah, that, got they take longer, the way longer. Oh yeah, that's what I work on then. Um, I don't know what a baobab tree is, but I know it had big roots, so I went and got it. That's called buttress roots. Can you not see how they kind of support that tree? Mm. There's some churches that we use buttress roots. And that's about a yard. That's pretty tall there. That's, that's a big old root there, buddy. And there's some designs. See these buttresses on those churches? The idea came from that root right there. That just that's just out there called it's called buttress, but they but they support your building. There's also roots look like this. That's your flying buttress. And they're they're holding that tree up, and there's your flying buttresses that are actually used in architecture to hold the building up. It's like taking two four and laying against it, but well, they make it part of the structure. Now you build a house, they'll 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 butt and then they'll. They'll you know, build it and then knock them things off and they can stand there by itself. But, that, but uh -huh. there are so many of uh, your pretty churches and they actually have this thing built into the structure which are called the flying buttress. This is not a flying, that's just a plain buttress. But there's your flying one. I thought that was pretty much it. But it does hold that thing up. Just like that holds that thing up. This is the picture that you're going to see next door. I took this picture through my little hundred dollar microscope. And I was impressed, but it's not as vividly clear. But here's what you're going to see. I got it set up next door. What would you call this part of it? 
epidermis. What do you call this part of it? Doesn't it? Can I make it bigger? Well, let me, I, 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 I get a name. So there's the cortex. Uh, this, both, this, this whole thing right here. What color would you call that? Red? Mm -hmm. That, that band right there? That's the Casparian strip. And then, do you see that row of cells right here inside there? Just that one inside? Mm -hmm. Peri cycle. Now, if you go a little deeper in, a little deeper in, you see this stuff right here. You see that? That's the floor. And then behind those, the zion. And what would you call that right there? It's a bit. Is this a monocot or a dicot? Dicot. Huh? Dicot. With the pith? Mm hmm. And no star? Sure. Monocot. Yeah, think about it. Monocot. One has a pith, one has a steel. The steel is on the star. It was the star. Pith is just open there. And this has the pith. Okay. Now, and that's all of them together. And that's the end of my slide. That took me a while.